First of all, I don't understand why in the breach is on because the, it's supposed to be the political show today. How our First Amendment rights have been desecrated by here and everywhere else in the world that people don't, just because people don't agree with. I don't understand that. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the wrong, that was the wrong, it's not calling the bleaches anymore, ladies and gentlemen. I just want you to know, thank you, yes. That is the name in the game, yes. That is I, Hector Bosa, the hardest and baddest, sexiest man on cable access TV going. I still don't know why you have in the bleaches there. Let's talk about the political stuff that are happening here in the world today that people think whoa, that we're... Whoa, 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 that whoa, 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 Stop, stop, stop. What are you talking about? What, what are you doing on my show? What the hell do you think you're doing, what man? Are you, what are you doing on my show? What you mean, I'm, my I, show? I, it's I, my show, You yo. come in here with your pajamas? I ain't wearing no, no pajamas. Coming here, you're coming this here is with my your Halloween stuff. costume. What you trying to do? You always trying to sabotage my show. You always, what is with you? You always wear your Halloween costume Is this costume your life's day? mission to try and take over every single person's show? Yeah, why do you have to scream like people are like, people Because like you Jeff. do this every single time. I don't you understand. always try and take over I, other people's I shows. I, I don't know. You I don't already got over. your own show. I do. Don't mess up that. I, I I can't mess up that. That's perfection. I, I I got my crack committee on that team. The only thing you're perfect at is driving women away with your personality, oh, I, I which is that of a tree stump, I and also them. drinking yourself to a. Freaking well, stupid. Well, I tell you something. I drive women all right, but it's not the way you're talking about. You That's drive the them away. Yeah, because away. Because they can't stand you. Yeah, How right. many times do I have to keep on repeating yeah. this? You no repeat woman it it. likes you oh, really? at all. Yeah, sure. Sure. Give you keep it on dreaming up. About it. Keep on dreaming about that. You know what? This ain't but, no but, dream. But, but you know what? No, the Yankees yeah. winning a World Series is a dream. You know okay? what? You know what? Though? You thinking that you're the sexiest the, man on cable right. access TV right. is about as laughable right. as Donald Trump see, bringing peace to the White House, I, which is impossible. But you see, you're infringing your First Amendment rights right now, so I'm letting I'm you I'm not doing a damn thing. So yes, you, you need are. to stop. Uh, you're, you're talking, and I'm allowing you to talk. That's all there is to it. Whether I like it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that's Can we get on to the show, please? I thought it was my show. They no, told me. This Kenny was told me it was your my show. show. This is my Kenny show. Kenny told me it was I my was show. I was the one God that came sakes. up with this idea 11 Kenny years ago. Kenny told me. Kenny told me he's You're said, just some Hector. dude who looks like a Kenny, fallen drug nah, lord Ken, on public Ken, assistance. Ken, Kenny said to me, Hector, you got this slot open today. He must have made a mistake again. I don't know what the hell's happened. This was supposed to be the political show. But Quite frankly, another, I'm surprised at show. Kenny because he never, ever makes mistakes like this. Look at that. He's cutting your like head this. off. You know why he's cutting your head off? Because you got a half a head to begin with. You More know like what? you got half a brain. Yeah, so do you. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, right. Anyway, I don't think so. Ladies and gentlemen, so. th this is still called in the bleaches. This is, who are you? <laughs> Your worst nightmare, that's what yeah, I am. I'm the worst nightmare around here, according to what people are talking about. But, you know, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, oh. all joking aside. Do you see what I have to work with here? Yes. Unfreaking believable. This is the first time I'm really actually back. And look at what I have to put up with. It should have been a nice party situation. Costume arising because tomorrow is Halloween. Uh, so happy okay, Halloween. Okay, that's it. I can't do this anymore. Ha happy Halloween no, Eve. No, 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 Halloween. No, Hallow's no, Day. How no. is it Happy Halloween or Hallow's Day? Which one is it? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is in the bleachers. My name's Hector Bosa, and Jamie Hickson just had to take a powder. <laughs> but I wanted to say this, ladies and gentlemen, that our New York Knicks. Finally won a game with a credible team. Now, did the Knicks do it by fluke? Or are the Cavaliers are that bad? You'll never know. Because I Isaiah Thomas is not back. And also, the rest of the team is doing so-so. When my partner Jamie Hickson comes, he'll explain more. I was talking about the New York Knicks. Ow. 
Stop. Yeah, how you're stop. always defending stop them hating. every single stop time hating. with uh, no reason whatsoever. Uh, no. I don't I think said, so. What did I say that was wrong? All I said was, was you said the, they were doing they, well, which what, they're what, not. Was the Knicks the Knicks? Was it a fluke that they beat the Cavaliers or the Cavaliers that bad? The Cavaliers have problems. I mean. Not only are they missing Isaiah Thomas, who uh, is going to be out until at least January or February, Derrick Rose has been in and out of the lineup because he's been hurt again. But you got him at, you got, they got him on cheap anyway. Yeah. They did, they get, they get him for they one got, year. They basically got him on the cheap because no, no one else will take him. And Dwight, they know about his injury history. And Wade is also on the cheap, too. He's on for about a year, too. Yeah, that's because and the Bulls bought out his contract. And also, um, but again, does that, is the Knicks, are, are they improving because their team is getting better a little bit because they're finally gelling? Or are the Cavaliers that bad that you'll see the Celtics beat them? Oh, well, you know that the Cavaliers will make it to the playoffs, but will they be number one again? Well, keep in mind, this is an 82 game season so as far as what the Knicks are right now they basically they basically are what the record says they are and right now they are one game under 500 why because they got two blowout wins against the Nets and Cavaliers they got blown out by Oklahoma City and also uh, one other team and then there was the Detroit game which quite frankly they really self-destructed in down the stretch. They should have won that game, and they did not. They did not because their fourth quarter defense was horrific. Again. Yeah, yeah but you know, it uh, with the... But the only reason why they're treading... Right, right now, the Knicks are treading water. That's they exactly are, they where are. they are right and now. I, and I think you shouldn't expect that many great things from them, I think. I think you, you just expect them to do well. Well enough that... They may have a shot at the playoffs, and they may be eliminated on the first round. Why? Because they're not that good yet. They may get there on the eighth seed or seventh seed, maybe, because you have Boston in first place right now, Toronto in second, the Nets are in third place <laughs> with a record of three and three and four. The Knicks are in fourth place with a record of two and three, and Philadelphia. Again, who's on the rebuilding stage as well, uh, is last with a record of two and four. Jamie, you take the rest of this. They're right here. The standings are right here. Talk about each team if you want. It's all yours. Yeah. Right now, Detroit, which a lot of people are not expecting big things out of because they're basically doing a rebuilding thing of their own. They wound up getting a, a couple of really important pieces over the, over the offseason. But right now... They're the ones that have the Central Division lead. But, again, it's way too yeah, early way to be talking early. about playoff seedings right now. Yeah, I mean, they've, each team has played six or seven games so far this year. But it's Detroit that's leading the Central. Then after that, it's Milwaukee, Indiana, Cleveland, and Chicago. I guarantee that's going to change within the next three or four months. With who? Which team? With, with uh, every team in every division this season. I mean, do not expect the Los Angeles Clippers to keep first place in the Pacific Division by the time January or February roll, rolls around. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Golden State, by far, is the best team. But they're off to a tough start right now. Mm. And that's because they've had a, a couple of really close losses, Damn. one of which uh, just so happened to be against Houston, the team that's... Uh, that's basically. All right. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank By you. By the way, that was Kenny Graham that uh, was on the other side of the glass. You no, know, he's just trying to haunt us because tomorrow is Hallow's. Today is Hallow's Eve, if, if I remember correctly. All Hallow's Eve, Eve is what the original name that's of right. uh, Halloween was called. My, my By the way, I want to wish everyone out there a safe. a safe and healthy Halloween. That's right. Secondly. Uh, as, as always, you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And we're somewhat filming live on Facebook, too. Mm -hmm. We're Even actually on we're Facebook off. Live we're, as we we're speak. We're off. They can't see you, but that's okay. They have to see me. Oh. Just In case me. you're wondering, uh, this is supposed to be my Stormtrooper costume 
Stormtrooper nah, actually, from Star Wars. actually, that's his PJs, but that's okay. These are not my PJs. This is a Stormtrooper costume. Every day he shows his, his costume, every day. I hate you. Thank you. That was anyway, a football player. I want to go. I, I just want to take at least 30 seconds to talk seriously. Oh, yes, of course. Usually you see me here with my friend Eric Rosen. Due to some creative differences, Due to, uh, er Eric has uh, decided to leave the show. But we certainly wish him the best. You can still see him on the Blitz Zone every right. Friday night at the same time, now 7 to 8. Now, Jamie, mind you, I was the originator here. And because of circumstances beyond my control, he was a substitute. That Actually, it, Nevin and Fred yeah, no, and but I'm the saying other Hector were the originators. That's right. They were the originators. And, and then, then you came along. Then I came along, and then everybody started leaving. And then Ed, Ed Sala gave us a great praise that we were the best combination. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it went downhill. But um, it's true. Oh, oh, we heard the cackling. I think we just we uh, heard got the greeted by of, a really good friend of ours. Is that is that double R? Is that Rosie? Is that Double R herself? Hi, Rosie. The the former Facebook queen. She's well. He says she's the former Facebook queen because uh, I think somebody beat her to the she, title yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. She doesn't play any more Facebook games. But we wish him well, and it's a shame that it, our First Amendment rights were trying to be crucified as well, ladies and gentlemen. Because let me tell you, what happened to the Texans? The Houston Texans, mm -hmm. they all took a knee down. Yeah. The majority and, oh, of them yeah, took a knee I down. Yeah, and I think you can thank Bob McNair, <coughs> excuse me, their boss for that, especially after he met with officials from the league just last week and made that ridiculous uh, inmates running the prison comment. Look at that. Lady. In response to uh, all of the players protesting the uh, the national anthem. And, and tell them why they protest, so that people can understand why they protest. The Texans not. took a knee yesterday for the same reason that the majority of the NFL players are doing, and that's because they are protesting racial okay. injustice in this country, as nothing one of, else. As one of the players said, as one of the players said, ladies and gentlemen, it's racial injustice. Well, look That's who a, just joined yay. us right now. I can't. No, leave it on, leave no, it on. Mine. Hey, oh. show me the money. Rosie's back. You're seeing the I'm goods, here. ladies and gentlemen. You're seeing the good. Look, she's bending for you. Oh, jeez. But anyway. Well, see, I'm here. Yes. And then this is my costume. Yes. Because I'm a college student, but I'm here as a professor. Yes, you're a <laughs> professor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, professor. I'm a professor. This is the costume. Oh, man. It, it's great to see you guys. It's oh, great to it's see great, you again. Great to see you again. We miss you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll, we'll see each other back more. Back please. Please, please, yeah. please. And, and also, but again, this is, something, this is something that has occurred that football players are saying again, that it's not about the flag or the service. And, and it's and this is about sports. This is happening about sports, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about politics. It's about sports. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. is happening in sports right now. People are still protesting, and they're not. Now I understand the other side, and they're doing the right thing themselves. They're protesting by not watching the football game. Yeah. You know what? You're allowed to protest that way too. If that's if you feel that way, go ahead and do it. That's that's your right. That's your right to protest, and that's it. That's all in general. But what happened to the Texans, whether you like them or not, they're doing it for the reason they're doing it. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the Texans because a lot of people don't know this, but the NFL's trading deadline is tomorrow, and yeah. the Texans just pulled off a deal. Go ahead. Tell them the deal. Well, long story short, the Texans just sent Dwayne Brown, who's an offensive lineman, to the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, in all likelihood, this is basically a money move and possibly a move for the Texans to get a draft pick in return, but Dwayne Brown is really going to help that offensive line of the Seahawks right now. Really? Yes, he is. Let me let me, let me ask you something. While 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 you're doing that, what what is the next big thing in, in uh, the next big thing in let's say football coming up right now? Because the Jets almost yeah. made it. Unfortunately, the Jets have uh, 
I'm trying to look up their record. The Jets now. have lost their last three games now. They're two games under 500. They're officially at the midpoint of the season. Okay. So here. with a three and five record, here the Jets are basically. Oh, that's the NHL. I don't even want to say treading water right now. They're they're basically um, hanging by a thread. I, I don't think you can even uh, consider uh, uh, any playoff possibilities they, with them they anymore, may especially after. Quite frankly, blowing three consecutive games that they should have won. I Each think, time okay. they blew second half leads and wound up costing themselves the game. I think they may, they may have a shot. It's a long shot, nonetheless, but they may have a shot. Okay, all right. So we got here in the American Conference. We got New England with a five and two record. I, I think that's uh, pretty much. Uh, un, un, that's no surprise right there. The Patriots are the dominant team in the in, the, in the division. And as long as Tom Brady is going to be there and Bill Belichick is going to be on the sidelines, the, the Patriots will still be the class of that entire conference, not Buffalo. just the, e the Eastern Division. Buffalo, Buffalo has two. surprised a lot of people this season. The reason why they're having such a good year is because LaShawn McCoy is having the season of his life and their defense has catapulted them to having a, an outstanding year so far. What's their weakness right now? Quarterback. Okay. I, I, I just can't trust Tyrod Taylor in a big game. All right. The guy now. is just uh, mechanically flawed. And the Patriots, for the record, are 6-2 and two now. Oh, uh, Miami is 4-3 and three Miami, since yesterday. Miami, when you think about it, after they lost Ryan Tannehill and signed Jay Cutler, which I thought was a, a really bad idea, the Dolphins are at least treading a little bit of water, but the way they got their heads handed to them by Baltimore last Thursday night, who's to say that uh, you got, you're going to be seeing uh, anything solid out of them the second half of the year? I you mentioned before that the Jets are three and five. Yeah, they're well. Yeah, they're three and five right now. But I don't think that was a bad move because if you, Jay Cutler is a decent quarterback, I think. His, I mean, he, he's an on and off quarterback like most quarterbacks, and you can count on him to do something well. I mean. He's like Starks, you know. He, you know, he, he was good at some points, and he's bad enough. John Starks. Yes, that's apples and oranges, yeah, right exactly. there. Because John Starks was was a such a gutty player and, and such a, a, a tremendous yeah, defender but, but and, Jesus, and emotional kept, player yeah, too. Yeah, but he he if, if he didn't get hot, forget about it. He was he used to he was two a brick eight, city. Two for eighteen. Jesus. That's okay. all I remember him. In for. the South, you have Jacksonville at four and three. So is Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee at four and three. Jacksonville has really surprised people this year. They've got a great, great rookie running back, Leonard Fournette. Their quarterback play has been up and down at best because the previous three years, Blake Bortles w was just stinking it up really, right. really bad. But so far, he hasn't been great. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been terrible either. He's just been very, very up and down. Yeah, okay, you got Houston. Houston's Houston. three and four, three and four. they lost a really disappointing game in Seattle yesterday. Had a lead in the in the final minute, and wound up uh, giving away the lead when Russell w Wilson basically uh, did his heroics once again. Let's see if we can do this quick. Uh, you tell me the good points and the bad point quickly in in in, in form of a game. Ready? Mm -hmm. Indianapolis. Colts. Oh, they're horrible. As long as Andrew Luck is still on the sidelines, they can't compete. Plus, their defense stinks. And, and, upside? and so does their offense. Do they their have upside, upside, decent running Andrew game. Luck. <laughs> well, <laughs> when, he when, when, he, when he's healthy, Andrew right. Luck can make them a contender. Okay. Otherwise, good core of receivers, right. decent, decent at best running game. Okay. In the North Division, you have Pittsburgh and, and this newspaper is 5-2 and two because they're not including yesterday's game. Yeah. Pittsburgh but is actually 6-2 six and two right six now. 6-2. and two. Right now, they're the best team in the division. And, uh, and strength and weakness, quick. Terrific play at quarterback, really powerful running game, great, great core of receivers, very strong offensive line. Uh, Baltimore at 4-4, four and four, but I know, I'm sure that's changed. Up and down, up and down. Joe Flacco has been uh, really hurt this season. He just recently, he was in concussion protocol, and he just barely got back for uh, the Baltimore game. But he got a really vicious hit in that game. If he's not in the lineup, Baltimore has no chance. Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. Cle Cleveland is dreadful. Cincinnati, 
quite frankly, I'm not expecting good things out of this year because their, their quarterback play has been a total disappointment. And both coaches are in the hot seat. Yeah. And they're supposed to play each other. Mm -hmm. So Marvin Lewis, is, hey, Marvin Lewis has been on the hot seat for a long time, and he still has a job. Let me ask you, good points and bad points about both teams, quick. Good points for Cincinnati. Good receiver play. Bad points, uh, regression at quarterback. Okay. And Cleveland? Cleveland's got a yeah. good core of young players, though. That's mm -hmm. one of their really strong points. Mm -hmm. they're, very, they're very strong at running back. Good, um, good play at linebacker. Uh, good play in the secondary. But their fundamentals are just horrendous. Oh. Okay. All right. Now we got the National Conference. Let's try to go as quick as possible, which is? The NFC, yeah. of course, uh, right it's now. It's, what is it, Philly? No. Philly's yeah. got the best record. Right here. That's and right, yeah. Am I right, Philly? Okay. Yeah, Philly's got the best record, and they're leading the East right now. Quite frankly, I just don't see anybody else that can overpower them. Now, what Dallas has been up and down. What are, wait a minute. What is Philly doing right? What is, what are, what's Philly's bad points right now? Their bad points right now, a little vulnerability in the secondary, but they're Line play, especially the uh, their uh, the defensive line and their linebacking core right. has been really solid. Their main strength, improved play at quarterback, and great, great core of receivers. Good points that but they're in first place mm -hmm. and playing well. The Eagles are, are playing terrific football this season. Is because that's because Carson Wentz is having one of his best years. Dallas, Dallas just uh, won a big game against Washington yesterday. Mm -hmm. Their strong points are going to continue to be Dak Prescott at quarterback, Zeke Elliott at running back, and in spite of his behavior, Des Bryant, a receiver, and a future Hall of Famer at tight end, which is, um, well, unfortunately his name escapes no, me. No, don't worry about it. Everybody forgets. Uh, really strong play on the offensive line. Right. The defense... Defense I would worry about a little bit because okay. they've been a little vulnerable, especially against teams that they should beat. The next two is Washington, which is in fourth place, and the Giants, who are in last place. Talk the about those two. Boy, are the Giants a sinking Washington. ship right now. What about now. Washington, though? As far as Washington, they could still try and salvage their season because they have gotten some pretty decent play right. from Kirk Cousins at quarterback. But See, I'm I, a little worried about their running game, though. You know what I like about you? I get to learn a lot, though information from you oh dear god what the hell is that that was the theme from halloween coming from rose's phone oh wow i thought it was <laughs> i thought it was possessed jesus i thought it was jamie's uh oh, well, anyway. but um you have here the giants good points wow. i mean bad points everything injuries at receiver really really declining play defensively and good points not this year, but next year, perhaps. Good points so far have been the uh, the play of Eli Manning. I mean, he hasn't really been that terrible. He hasn't turned the ball over that right. much. I just would like for him to see the field a little bit better. If the offensive line doesn't hold, he can't do anything. Yeah, and if that's the another bad point. The offensive anything, line stinks. You know what? They have to improve. Okay. We have next. And for the record, Ro is just playing the uh, theme from Halloween we gotta, on the airwaves We got to right do now. this quick because I got something to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, the South, New Orleans. They really two. surprised me this year. I didn't expect them to be this good. Why? Because they were a good team. For the before, last, yeah. yeah, for the last, I would say four or five years, New Orleans has been really, really weak defensively. But that has been one of their strengths this year. The other strength being Drew Brees continuing to defy age. He's been outstanding this year. How old is he? He's 38. Look at it. Well, technically, uh, well, in football terms, 38 is old, mm -hmm. but... Um, he's supposed to be in the in the twilight of his career. He still yeah. looks like he's uh, he's at his peak. Well, I think because of, because of equipment and good living, let's say, mm -hmm. supposedly we have... See, there's always, a, there's always a fight between back in the day and now. Right now, we have better equipment, supposedly, and we t supposedly take care of ourselves better. But because of the asbesticides that they put on food and all that other stuff, mm -hmm. people are saying, no, it's not good. So it's an in-between, because look at the way Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, and 
Mickey Mantle. They were some really, I mean, and look at the Maxes, like we called them Motaban and mm -hmm. all the other guys. Yep, yep. They didn't have those equipment back then, and they just did what they had to do to improve themselves. So, but um, the Carolinas, Panthers. Carolinas, uh, half a game out of first in the NFC South. They're they have four been and three so here. hard to figure out this year. Okay, bad points first, quick. Both bad points. points Bad attitude at quarterback. He's been really, really erratic this year. For the people that don't know that the quarterback, what's his name? It's Cam Newton. Okay, yeah. He, he walked out and so forth. Uh, uh, yeah. And it's probably because he's having a bad day. You know what? People don't understand that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Atlanta, Falcons. Atlanta just escaped with a victory against the Jets yesterday. I still think that they can try and do something with the rest of the season, especially with Matt Ryan at quarterback. That's their main strength. Their main strength has been their quarterback play. He's been just really trucking along this year, and he's got a great running game and great duo of receivers to, to try and uh, lead the Falcons to the next level. I worry about their defense, though. Their defense has been really shredded in some games this year. We are definitely in the Halloween spirit, ladies and gentlemen, and yeah. we've got our dear friend Rosanna to thank for Double that. R, in the place to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Tampa Bay, who's in last place with two and four record in this newspaper, but because yeah, of they're yesterday. actually two and five now. They wound up getting their butts but kicked by last Carolina place yesterday. Right okay. Tampa's been a disappointment. People expected them to be better this year, and they've not been. We have the North and the West coming up. So... Minnesota, mm -hmm. Minnesota Vikings, what? Quick. Minnesota is 6-2. and two. The only reason why they're in first place right now is because the Packers don't have Aaron Rodgers. But that doesn't mean that the, the Vikings are not uh, any good. They've gotten really surprisingly good qu quarterback play from Case Keenum this year. Don't do that because you could... Mm. And this begs the question, what's going to happen when, te when Teddy Bridgewater comes back? Are they going to go back to Bridgewater as the QB? Or is Keenum going to continue to start for them? Well, the hot hand always... If he's winning, then you keep him. If if he's not winning, then you take him out. That's mm -hmm. that's normally the, the the proverb to that. Green Bay Packers. Green Bay's four and three now. Not having Aaron Rodgers is really going to test their mettle this year. Doesn't mean that they're not going to be a playoff team, but quite frankly, they're just not the same without him. Detroit Tigers. <coughs> I mean Detroit Tigers. Detroit. You're close. It's the Lions. Lions. The Lions are three and four now. Uh, oh, they, look, they, Ghostbusters! Oh, wow. Hand in W... S, uh, wait a minute, what, what's this place called? Oh, WCTV. Mm -hmm. We are now playing Ghostbusters. Anyway, the Lions have been a major disappointment, and, and, uh, but still, Matt Stafford at quarterback still gives them a chance to try and compete. And last but not least is Chicago Bears. Chicago, Tell believe it or not, has been a little bit better. They've been a little bit better defensively, They've gotten solid play from their running game. Now they have their number one draft pick, Mitch Trubisky, uh, starting at quarterback now, which is what they should have done at the start of the season. In the he's going to have he's going to have his problems, but they're going to be much better with him in the long run. Did you expect in the West for the Los Angeles Rams to be in first place? No one did. The Rams are supposed to be in rebuilding mode. The only reason why they're tied for the West division lead with Seattle is because Jared Goff has done a complete turnaround at here? quarterback. They've been wonderful at quarterback. They've gotten really good uh, play from Todd Gurley at, uh, in the backfield. Mm -hmm. Plus, Sammy Watkins as their receiving threat, outstanding. Plus, right. the defense has been outstanding as well. Seattle? Seattle, a lot of people say that their defense has been uh, regressing a little bit, mm -hmm. but I just don't see it, to be honest with you. I think they're still playing the same way that they always have been. And I would say that the, that the Seahawks defense is going to be the difference the second half of the year. Plus, you can't forget Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's been outstanding. So that's their bad point, and that's their good point. Mm -hmm. Russell, Russell is their good point. Russell Wilson and the defense have been especially their good points. The bad, bad points, points, a suspect running game. Okay, and who else is next? Arizona. Arizona and San Francisco. San Francisco is horrible. Arizona, as long, well, they just lost Carson Palmer for a long time because he wound up getting hurt again, which means Drew Stanton is going to have to start in his place at QB. So it looks like it's going to have to be up to the defense to try and rescue things for the Cardinals. You know what? That's the end of this. 
Don't forget Thursday, the Jets are playing. Yes, the Jets have the Bills it's a on shame Thursday night. We don't night. have a schedule on who's going to on the schedule for the next week. But I wanted to tell you, ask you something. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there's been there's been a lot of things happening in Staten Island. Yes, there and, have. And this is a Staten Island show. And one of the things that we wanted to do when we first signed on to the show is do let's some talk about what was going on in our neck of the woods, specifically well, here, what's happening with um, the schools over here. Go ahead, knock it out. Well, I'm just looking good. Guess what I did this past weekend that I had never, ever done before. What? I went to see high school soccer. Oh, great. How did it was it? But it was, it was surprisingly good. Well, did you and it wasn't just uh, high school soccer either. It was playoff high school wow. soccer. And uh, uh, specifically, deal? it was Wagner hosting Lincoln in a first round game. Oh, wow. Let me see if they have it here. I doubt it. But you know what? Talk about what's here right now because you have, mm-hmm. you actually have a lot of stuff. Well, not that much stuff at the moment. That's ha- Look at this. Oh, I actually have some stuff. Uh, Read this first before you get to that, please. I actually have some stuff uh, over here. Okay. Uh, first off, let's <clears throat> let's check out what's going on on the boys' side of the soccer playoffs. That's right. First off, uh, Newdorp won. They won 3-2 over Lab Museum over at Randall's Island. Wow. And Tottenville also won, thanks to some help from Jose Sanchez. The final score was 1-0 over New Utrecht, which is from Brooklyn. Unfortunately, Petridis lost 4-2 against Francis Lewis. In and basketball? That's oh, also in soccer. Oh, wow. Soccer. And yesterday, they were supposed to have the Curtis-Columbus game, but obviously it got rained out. Right. So they're going to make that up tomorrow. Go ahead. Now, say what you were going to say about Staten Island on your side. All right. Let's see what else is going on in, uh, in soccer. Because it is a Staten Island program, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to see if I can talk get myself Staten some uh, girl soccer notes here. That's yeah. If this phone can cooperate with me. And there we go. MSI team won. Oh, right. Won nothing over Lab Museum. Good. And over the weekend, we mentioned before that Wagner was playing Lincoln. One thing about Lincoln High from Brooklyn. Yes. They have always had a powerful, powerful program. Right. Not just in, in football and basketball, but baseball and soccer as well. And let's see what happened in the, in the other scores as well. But ah, here we are. Okay. Tottenville won six nothing over Sunset Park in right. a game that was played over at the CSI McCown, and the Curtis girls wound up beating New Utrecht four one in Brooklyn. No. And uh. Wagner won. They won six to one over Lincoln. So Wagner's going to go to the next round. They're going to play. They're going to play Forest Hills from Brook from uh, Queens. Right. Petridis is going to play the Bronx. Mm-hmm. And Curtis is going to take on Beacon Park. Now, let me ask you, in all the years you've been on Staten Island and you've been following the high school program and the college program, Mm -hmm. which so far had the most wins in, let's say, basketball? Has it been Wagner High School, McKee, or Nudo? Because I remember their football program, that was, wow, that was. (laughs) They're coming for you, Jamie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a story for another day. Oh, the dogs. Mm-hmm. But the, um, who's had a better I remember football program? Because uh, McKee, I used to hear McKee always had a great football program. Mm-hmm. Wagner, and even Lately, Europe once in a while. McKee Staten Island Tech has had a very, very strong program in the uh, second division of high school football. Mm-hmm. The first division, is it's always been either Curtis or Tottenville. Or Wagner. Don't do that. And lately, uh, it's it's just been a, a three-team race to decide the top level of, of high school ball here on the island. But that's only in the public leagues. In the yeah. Catholic leagues, everything revolves around either St. Peter's or Farrell mm-hmm. or C. Yeah, because Farrell, Farrell, that's another. They've always had a great football team. Mm-hmm. They've always had a great football team since the years that I've been living here. And you've always heard about them, mm-hmm. Farrell. Um, even Petridis, but they, they, theirs was basketball. Yep. They've always been a basketball team. Wagner College made it yeah. to, you know, and even we've had some great actors come out from there too. Ed Platt was one of them. That's right. The guy from uh, Get Smart, 
And um, who? David Johansson. Yeah, who went to Port Richmond and, and then became Buster Poindexter. And the funny thing is, I when I saw him and I said, hey, you, you're from Staten Island and you, how did you graduate and all that? He goes, wow, somebody that really knows me. <laughs> <laughs> because for some reason. Because keep in mind, it's been a Buster long time. Buster Poindexter goes back 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she should remember, but and not um, a lot of people are gonna remember this generation. Well, this generation is not really gonna know of the '80s generation of, of celebrities. I don't know about that because the '80s generation is is although back then is it's although required. the '80s are making a comeback. Yeah. And all, and also, Look at me. So is the '90s. Yeah, especially with they, fashion. They used to have the '90s show mm -hmm. that flopped because it was too early, but yep. hopefully they'll come back. But well, you know what? Let me ask you. It's funny that you mentioned football because yeah. uh, uh, we mentioned Curtis and Tottenville being yeah. the two top dogs. Yeah. Well, they wound up playing each other this weekend, wow. and it was Curtis that came away with the victory, 42 35. That must have been a hell of a game mm -hmm. because they're both strong, strong college players. Who is their coach? Do you know offhand? For Curtis? Yes. It's Pete Gambardella. And for Wagner? For Wagner, it's uh, Al Paterzo. A guy who's been winning over 200 games for his career. Wow. You know, that's impressive because nobody really knows that. It's a shame. Do, uh, do, when you went to the soccer game, mm -hmm. was there a lot of people there supporting soccer? I don't think there were more than maybe was it, did, 60 or 70 people in the stands. Because of the rain? Oh, no. It was a sunny day on oh, Saturday. They're just not very supportive. I don't think there were that many uh, fans that were into soccer. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting when you consider the new MLS team that made their debut this season, yeah. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They drew sixty-five to seventy thousand fans a game at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And you know the um, the Red Bulls? Mm -hmm. They're actually going to play. They're the going to be playing in the playoffs. They're going to be playing soon. in the playoffs. Hey, Jamie, I got something for you, but I'm going to let you read because you have a better voice than I. Look what's happening in soccer. I mean, in in, in boxing. Yes. Checking out some of the other stuff that's going on in boxing. Did you know, I think it's supposed to be this coming weekend yeah. that they're going to have a, a card over in Brooklyn. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Cool. We got to talk about that. Now, uh, overseas, wow. they drew 78,000 fans for a fight in Wales. And it was uh, for the WBA and the IBF heavyweight title. And it was Anthony Joshua that won it over uh, Carlos Takam, who was replacing... Who brought Pulev? So uh, a Joshua champion in itself. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be to uh, to put together the the the, the, the titles in, in between. Yep. And you know what's funny? The guy lasted 10, 10 rounds. Mm -hmm. The guy that was supposed to be a substitute lasted ten rounds, so he can't be that bad. And the thing about Anthony Joshua was, he weighed in at two hundred and fifty-five pounds. Woo. So I'm not sure that if he packed on muscle, or maybe he might have spent a little bit too much time at the buffet table. But for him to go this long, he was really taken to the limit right. going 10 rounds. But the bottom line is he still won both crowns, and now it's just a matter of time before he uh, takes on his next opponent. As, as you look through this to find out, I, wanted to tell you, I, wanted, I want you to hear this. Read, read some of this. I actually heard that George Foreman wanted to come back <laughs> and fight Steven Seagal. What? Yes. You find something interesting. Well, uh, Seriously? He actually, yes. He actually wanted to fight Steven Seagal. Oh, brother. Because he's because of comments that Steven Seagal has made. But also, it would make money. Mm -hmm. George Foreman is in his 60s and still in great shape. And Steven Seagal is a, is, is a master in Aikido. So Isn't George Foreman approaching 70 years of age, could though? Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. I don't but then know. again, he did come back in his 40s, and he wound up winning and the he, heavyweight title. And he should have won that fight, too, by points, but they didn't want to give him the title afterwards. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, if we can uh, check out some of the other stuff, Go you ahead. told me something really interesting Go just ahead. before the show Go ahead. that involved Jackie Robinson. Yeah, Jackie Robinson. Go ahead. Well, get this. One of his baseball caps that he wore, which had some special padding on it. So he won't get beamed. Yeah, so he would not get beamed. 
It actually sold at an auction for almost 600 grand. Wow. $600,000. And that leads us to baseball. Mm -hmm. Baseball, the Dodgers. First and the of Astros. All, first of all, the Nationals got a new uh, David Martinez. Yeah, Dave Martinez, Dave Martinez, who I remember seeing playing many years ago. He was a good contact hitter. I yeah. think he was about a 260, 270 hitter for his career. Really good player, but he bounced around with a lot of teams. Yeah. He played for the Cubs. He played for um, the Cincinnati Reds. Okay. Was born here in New York, but he grew up in Miami. Really good player. He finally got his chance to be a manager at age 53. Yeah. So he's going to manage the Washington Nationals. He's a, he's a Nationals player. Now. He's not a cat. He wasn't a catcher. Which is he was an outfielder. Fun. Look at that. A very Paul quick Monitor, outfielder too. Paul Monitor was an outfielder too. Mm -hmm. He also played first base. But mm -hmm. my, it's funny how most, of, like, like I said last week, most of the catchers and pitchers are normally managers. Mm -hmm. And Joe Girardi not being signed by the Yankees because they want to try a whole new different route. Yeah. That's a shame, I think, depending upon who they get. Who's out there that, that they, they Well, might unfortunately, the, the number of candidates that are out there are growing kind of dim because they're all getting uh, open jobs. Alex Cora d took the Boston job. We heard, of, you know about Dave Martinez. Right. Now, um, Ron Gardenhire, who managed the Twins for 15 years, yeah. he took the Detroit job. So all that's left for the Yankees are probably some internal candidates and other candidates that you probably won't even believe or, or maybe even laugh at. Do you mm -hmm. know that Alex Rodriguez was mentioned as a candidate? I could see it. He not only was an outstanding player, he's a brilliant, he's got a brilliant mind baseball yeah, mind. He definitely has the, the smarts for the game. Derek Jeter, I think, could have been the manager too. But I think it would have uh, been too uh, soon. A bench manager, I don't see it. But a front office manager, yeah. he definitely He's has smart, the, the even chops though, for that. Even though he was in the Miami office. Mm -hmm. but um, One guy that they did mention on uh, Michael K. show last week, yes. the longtime uh, coach, Rob Thompson. Look at that. He's been a guy who's worked for, the Yan He's worked for the Yankees for over two decades now. And he's really, really respected by the organization. Well, what, did he, what did Girardi do? That they're saying we have to take a new approach. Is it because I think it might be what Chapman, he did not do. Is it because of Chapman saying that they shouldn't sign him? Because Chapman did say. From what I heard, there was a something. real conflict between him and Brian Cashman. I, and that's a shame. And Brian Cashman went to Hank Steinbrenner and said he's got to go. That's a shame. You know. Yeah, it's, but, it's, um, it's really disappointing what's going on with the with the with the manager's job. Is Houston and Dodgers? Oh wait, look what happened. The guy hits a home run, right? What does he do, ladies and gentlemen? When he hit the home run, he went like this. Yeah, he made a gesture to uh, mock you, like you Darvish, who uh, wound up giving up that home run. And as a result, he got a fine. And he got suspended for the first five games of next year. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. More, more stuff that people don't want to talk about, but it's still happening in sports today. Look at that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I could understand some jokes here and there, but that's a little bit, that's a little bit far gone, I would say. Trash talking. This just know? goes to show you but that it, racism does not know any boundaries, boundaries exactly. whatsoever. And it's a shame. But um, it's funny but you mentioned Houston and, and Los Angeles. Did you see last the night's game? game? Oh, great game. Twelve to eleven in ten innings. That was. Pro by far one of the best World Series games I ever saw. And it was also one of the most highly rated. Do you know that game got more ratings than Sunday Night Football? I can see. Got a 12.8 rating. I can see why. Again, because of the people that are protesting. And secondly, you know, it all depends who was playing on that, on the third, on that game that mm -hmm. day. But you got to remember, this is the playoffs too. Yeah. And this is Dod the Dodgers who are a machine, even though they are in the buildings. Have you noticed a trend? as well that's happening. Have you noticed this, that most teams that are making the playoffs or are doing well are, are in a rebuilding stage and they're not supposed to win? Yeah, the Yankees were one of those teams. The other team was the Minnesota Twins, who made the team as the second wild card in the American League. They were not supposed to contend for another year or two. So look, and look. they got outstanding seasons from a lot of their young guys. And look what's happening. This is a trend that's happening now. It's no, it's no fake now. Mm -hmm. 
the trend Arizona is, and Colorado are the same way in the National League. The Sixers are supposed to be a, uh, an up and coming because mm-hmm. they're very, the Knicks are supposedly in the rebuilding stage. The Nets are supposed to be in the rebuilding stage. The Yankees are supposed to be in the rebuilding stage. The Mets have to be in the rebuilding stage yeah, right now. Speaking of the Mets, they finally got the manager that they were looking for, which is Mickey Calloway. Yeah, we talked about that last mm-hmm. week. And hopefully he'll do well. You know, I just want all the New York teams, whatever profession they're in, to play well. You know, to play well and that's it. Mm-hmm. I just I don't want anything else to happen. But... Are there anything in, is in baseball right now that's happening besides the Dodgers? Because they're playing tomorrow. Yep. And they're well, up three two now. The Dodgers, the Astros now lead the series three two. Game six. What is a tomorrow. big comeback! Yeah. Damn, that, that was a big major, comeback. major comeback Jeez. that the Astros made. So now game six is tomorrow, and the Astros are going to have Justin Verlander pitch, and uh, the Dodgers are going to go with Rich Hill, and if necessary, the seventh and deciding game is going to be. Wednesday. And you predicted that the Dodgers would go six. I said the Dodgers would and win the series in six Eric games, and now it's the Astros that are up with a chance to win it in six games. And Eric predicted that the he liked Astros, the Astros. Astro in seven. Astros in seven, yeah. You know what? I think I believe Eric, I think, because that, that, it, you can go either way, ladies and gentlemen. You really can. Mm-hmm. You know? And um, again, a lot more sports happening. Last but not least, the National Hockey League, yeah, which Tampa Bay is the first of which, place. Uh, Eastern Conference. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the Eastern Conference, the Islanders are playing right now. They're hosting Vegas. Hey, let me let me um, let me do like they did with football. Tampa Bay, good or bad? Let's get to those standings right now. In Twelve and nine. NHL. Twelve and Tampa's nine. Tampa's twelve and nine. They're off to a solid start this year. Oops. Sorry. Go ahead. Don't worry. Keep on talking. That ain't going to stop you. Some really good play from Ryan Callahan. And also, they, they, they brought in a couple of newcomers that have gotten them off to a really good start. Ottawa, 12, I mean, 11 and 5. Mm hmm. And for the record, this is the, uh, the Atlantic Division. Tampa's tw- uh, 9 2 and 1, to be exact. The Tampa's played 12 games this year, and Tampa's 9 2 and 1. They're off to an outstanding start. Ottawa, very hit or miss so far. They're 5 1 and 5. They're 5 and 6, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And, and Toronto right now is 7 and 4, getting great play from Austin Matthews, who's off to a, a, a dynamic start. I have 11 and 7. Well, it's 11 oh, games game. played. Oh, oh and that's seven right. Wins. That's right. 7 and 4. Detroit. Five and six. Detroit's five, six, and one. Then after that, Boston's four, three, and two. Right. And then you got the have nots. Florida's four, five, and one. Buffalo uh, off to a disappointing start, three, seven, and two. Montreal has been really bad this year, now, three, in, seven, and two. In that division, are the standings of where they're supposed to be, or do you, or do you see a dark horse coming? There is, right now, the one dark horse that I see coming out of this is Toronto. As long as Austin Matthews is, is continuing his hot streak, I think the Maple Leafs can go really, really far. Detroit is basically in rebuilding mode. Boston, uh, I would say, is about a year or two away. Right. Florida, Buffalo, and Montreal, major disappointments this year. Okay, now we got the Western Conference, which is St. Louis, 9-2-1. and two and one. Yep. Winnipeg, 5-3-2. and two. Mm-hmm. Colorado, 6-5-0. Dallas six five and zero, mm-hmm. Nashville five four and two, Chicago five five and two, Minnesota four three and two. Mm-hmm. Take it away. Yeah, and then there's the Pacific Division. No, what do, what do you think of them? What do I? Well, right now St. Louis obviously is off to their best start of this season. They've got the best goal differential. Plus, uh, defensively, they have really held their own. Ah, okay. What else? Winnipeg, I think, has uh, surprised a couple of people this season. Uh, Colorado and Dallas. Colorado, to be honest with you, has really surprised a lot of guys. I think their mm. uh, top draft pick has given them some really, really big thoughts for a, a, a hopeful future. Dallas, I think, uh, has a chance to be decent. Nashville, obviously having a, a down year at, at the year after uh, making the Cup Finals. Chicago's been a disappointment. I think they're getting a lot older. Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves have, n- have uh, gotten a little bit long in the tooth, but I still think they're going to be a threat the second half of okay. the year. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same thing I did. 
Los Angeles, ah, that's five the Pacific and, uh, Division. Nine and one. Vegas, eight and one. Uh, Vancouver, six, three, and two. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what's that? Six, three, and one, actually. Yeah, six, three, and one. You got uh, San Jose, which is five and five. I missed one. But uh, San Jose is five, yeah, they're, six, they're, and zero. Yeah, they're literally a 500 team this and year. And Seoul's Calgary, Calgary and six and six. Who's the other team? Anaheim is six, six, four, and one. Edmonton is three, six, and one. Arizona predictably winless this year in their first now 12, tell me, 11 games. Is that their division? Is that where they're supposed to be? Is there no one there? saw the expansion Vegas Golden Knights? That's a good be, name, by the way. Where, yeah. That's a, Las that's Vegas a good has won eight of their first nine games of their inaugural season. Mm -hmm. This is a team that had a plan. Right. They wanted to win now, mm. and they're doing that with great, great line play. Okay. And last but not least, which I forgot, which is the Devils are eight and two. The Metropolitan Division, yeah. Pittsburgh are seven five and one. Columbus seven four and zero. Islanders six four and one. Philly six five zero. Washington five five one. Carolina four four two. And Rangers and the New York Rangers three seven and two. Take it away, Jamie. What do you think? The Devils quite frankly, have gotten off to a really, really good start this season. And it's really important for them, especially considering that they had the first overall pick and they wound up getting a really good player, Nico Hischier, a guy who, for some reason, not a lot of people are really high on. But the reason why they're off to a good start is because, one, Brian Gibbons has given them really good uh, scoring play. And also, Willie Butcher has also been a good setup man for them. And also... His year has been a really, really good rookie this season. I, slowly but surely, the Devils are going to be able to do some really good things. The Islanders are basically the second best team in the tri-state area right now. And John Tavares has done all he can to try and make them relevant. The Rangers have been a, a colossal disappointment this season. They've gotten nothing from, Ke from Kevin Shattenkirk. Henry Klundquist has gotten long in the tooth. And quite frankly, I just don't see any end to their power play walls. They still have problems scoring on the power play, mm -hmm. and, and their defense in their own zone has been abysmal. Do you think that they have a chance of coming They back? can, but they really have to start stepping it up, and that means trying to defend their own zone. That's number one. Number two, score on the power play. I mean, the power play for them has been a major problem for a long time now. Hey, you know, um, I was just reading that the Oklahoma uh, Thunder. The Oklahoma City yeah, Thunder, yeah. Thunder, they want a plane. Yeah, they want their own and, charter and, plane. And they were descending and somehow a plane, a, a bird, <laughs> uh, they, the bird must have gone into one of the engines and mm -hmm. they had to land down and then Carmelo Anthony was in that plane. Now, I don't know if you noticed, ladies and gentlemen, but they split the teams so that they, there's not an entire team that that's on the same plane. Yeah. Reason being mm -hmm. is so that so that um, if something, God forbid, happens, the, there's still some team members left. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that that's 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 kind of um, oof, iffy. But here's something I found that you would like in figure skating. Yeah. Yeah, we do a lot of different stuff. Yeah, figure skating has been a really uh, sore point for me simply because of the scoring system. The scoring system in that sport has never been great whatsoever. I never liked the scoring system in hockey either because they should just go by wins and losses and that's it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. And it's funny you mentioned they... figure skating because just four months from now, the Winter Olympics, Olympics are going to take place. Wow. And, the and they're going to take place in Korea. And the thing is, for... And Figure skating is very popular. Mm -hmm. Besides the diving, figure skating is one of the most popular sports in yep. the Olympics. And it's a shame that they took wrestling out of there. Mm -hmm. Speaking of figure Romans. skating. It came from the Romans. And yep. now you don't take something like that. Speaking of uh, ice skating, they, uh, the team of Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer wound up getting a world best score during their program uh, in, a, in a meet up in uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. 
This was during uh, Skate Canada International, and their teammate, Caitlin Osmond, wound up doing three triple jumps in her singles uh, routine, so she now has a seven-point lead. Now, three triple jumps, ladies <coughs> and gentlemen. If you've never seen it, go check it out. That's very, very hard to do. You need a lot of leg strength there. Yeah. And boy, that lady must have jumped real high because a triple is something to be seen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something to be seen. Aaron, and uh, NBC's been doing a lot of heavy, heavy promotion for the Winter Olympics. Well, they should. In fact, the men have, the American men have a really good prospect, Nathan Chen. He is seeking to become the first figure skater to successfully complete a quintuple jump. A quintuple jump. He did it? No, he, wa he wants he to wants attempt to, to, to Oh, com wow. To finish off a successful quintuple jump. Oh, you thought wow. a triple jump and a quadruple jump were tough? The quintuple jump has never, ever been done before. And, and that takes a lot And he's going to try and do that in Korea in February. In China, uh, Dustin Johnson shot a four under par 68. Yep, that, that's in golf news. That's right, in golf news, it's uh, HBC champion in uh, four plays to win three World Cup champions in the same year. Johnson was in 17 under par, 199, and is leading leaving six shots behind. So mm -hmm. that's not bad. And here's something that you'd like, skiing. The yeah, speaking of the Olympics for next year, uh, that's the other high-profile sport yeah. that's going to be taking center stage in that's, Korea. That's one thing, toboggan well, they and just, skiing. Mm -hmm. that's, that, those are well, good they just started the World Cup season recently, and uh, a woman named Victoria Rosenberg wound up winning the uh, first race that took place over in Austria. She wound up winning the... Uh, the giant slalom, and she wound up beating the defending champion, uh, Tessa Worley, who's from France. You know, I and uh, unfortunately, Lindsey Vaughn, who's our top American, yeah, and she's gonna try and give it a go for one more Olympics. Unfortunately, she failed to qualify for uh, the run in Austria, so hopefully, she'll be able to bounce back for the next meet that she does. Uh, let's see what's going on with the colleges. Here yeah, the, the colleges, yeah. Go Unfortunately, ahead. Wagner wound up losing uh, in college football over the weekend, 31-16 to with Bryant University. Left. Right, go ahead. Yep. Knock and it out quick. Yeah, unfortunately, Wagner lost. Right. But basketball season is going to be starting really soon. Okay. And Bashir Mason hopes to lead Wagner to uh, an NCAA tournament down the road. Hopefully for them it'll be this year. And also CSI is going to be starting basketball season next month as well. Mm hmm and ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm sorry to hear that due to circumstances. I wish Eric would come back. But um, there is one thing I want to say, mm -hmm. and that is you may not like what I say, but you have the right to defend it. Mm -hmm. If well. that quote is correct, right? Am I, am I correct in that quote? No. What is it? How's the quote go? Because Rosanna Robertson is taking political science, as she knows. No, come on. Come tell me. I Rosanna want, Robertson, Rosanna ladies Robertson, and gentlemen. Hey, she's gonna correct the return. Me. It's I may not agree with what you have to say, but I will defend your I will defend your right to say it to the death. And that's the that's truth. A paraphrase. That's a paraphrase. And that's her story and she's sticking to it. That's right. By the way, uh, yes. with about a minute left, not sure if you're into horse racing at all, but they're gonna have the Breeders' Cup this coming weekend and, and? next Sunday. Is the marathon. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a lot of traffic. <laughs> so yeah, there's going to be a whole lot of traffic, especially here. Enjoy your Halloween, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow. Scare the heck out of people, but be safe and don't get dumb. Yes, All right? please don't do anything Don't stupid. do anything dumb tricks that'll get you in jail or anything like that. Be careful, be safe. And, Jamie, thank you once again. Thank and you for coming week, back. Thank you. Next week, we have a special guest. Do we have a special guest? We have a special guest next week. Oh, okay. So if you like wrestling, ladies and gentlemen, Summer Rae was left out. Darren, uh, Darren, uh, Darren Young also got kicked out from by WWE. And what's her name? I forgot her name. Well, anyway, 
Bye bye, ladies and gentlemen. Jamie. For everyone here, I'm Jamie. I'm Thanks Hexa. Once again to Rosie on the other side of the glass. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.